First came the harm. For most of Canada's history, the official policy of the federal government towards Indigenous people? Forced assimilation. Residential schools, a key tool for that job. Canada's assimilation policies that have attempted to extinguish us as a people. Again, make no mistake, this is genocide. Then a change and an apology. The government of Canada now recognizes that it was wrong to forcibly remove children from their homes, and we apologize for having done this. That was followed by a commission to find the truth and propose ways to reconcile Canada and the land's Indigenous peoples. And in 2015, a new Prime Minister and new promises to fulfill all 94 calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It sets us squarely on the path to true reconciliation. But ambition has often exceeded action. Too many priorities remain unfulfilled. We're no longer accepting hollow apologies. Concrete actions and changed behaviors are essential. On this first National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, for example, 32 First Nations communities are still without clean water. And just a handful of First Nations have the authority or the resources to run their own education and child welfare systems. In the just-concluded federal election, more promises to do better. This election mattered, and the choice Canadians made to go even further and even faster on the fight against climate change, to go even stronger on reconciliation, including on economic reconciliation and creating uh, opportunities for Indigenous peoples across this country. The Prime Minister participated in a reconciliation ceremony Wednesday night here on Parliament Hill. His posted public itinerary for today said he was to be in Ottawa for private meetings, but in fact... Global News discovered he was not in Ottawa, but he and his family were on a plane by 7 a.m. Eastern to travel to Tofino, B.C. on Vancouver Island's west coast. So in that sense, on this National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, the PMO's posted itinerary was not that truthful. Now, the PMO confirmed that Trudeau and his family will have a few days of downtime in Tofino, but that today the Prime Minister spent time on the plane talking by phone to residential school survivors. Donna? Okay, David Aiken in Ottawa, thank you.